Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be talking about top 10 most frequently asked JavaScript interview questions. The approach that we are going to follow throughout this video will be that we will be first discussing the problem, then we will discuss the solution and then the approach that you should take during any interview when you are asked to solve this problem. And at the end of it, I will also try to give some tips how you can approach this. Let's jump right ahead into the first question. The first question that we have here is flattening an array in JavaScript. So what does this mean? Flattening transforms a multidimensional array into a single dimensional one. We'll explore a recursive approach towards solving this problem and let's see an example to understand what the problem is actually. So we have an input just like this you can see on your screen. It has a lot of nesting, nesting of arrays into it and the output that we need is a flattened array, right? So let's see how the solution looks like. I want to keep this video short so that you guys can watch this video before each and every JavaScript interview of yours. In order to do so, I'll keep the solution section very brief and you can pause the video, understand the solution and get back to me in the comments if you do not understand anything. So let's see the solution for flattening array. Here in the solution, we are creating a function called flatten array. This function will return a result and inside of it, we are doing some manipulations. Pause the video to understand the solution clearly. Now let's look at the approach that you can take during an interview to solve this question. So firstly you need to ask this question to the interviewer that do you want to control the depth of the flattening. Let's say I have 10 levels of nesting inside the parent array. Now there could be a solution, there could be a question that the interviewer only wants to flatten until the level 5 and post that the array should remain the same. So in that case you will take another argument called depth and you can change the logic in the function based on that. Let me know if you are able to solve this question or not. If you want a dedicated video on this topic, I will surely make one. Then how to approach this question? Solve for first level of nesting, right? Then move forward and solve for the remaining levels by using recursion. So that it also feels to the interviewer that you are taking one step at a time instead of thinking that you already know the solution. And solve with whatever looping method you want for loop by loop anything. But there are people who specifically asked this question using the reduce method. So practice with that as well. Now let's move to the next question. The difference between var, let and const. So var being function scoped, it is hoisted at the top of its scope with a default value of undefined and it can be redeclared and updated. Let, it is block scoped, hoisted at the top of its scope, but it is not initialized. Technically it is initialized with the value of undefined, but it stays in the temporal dead zone. It can be updated but not redeclared in the same scope. Now talking about const, const is also block scoped, hoisted but not initialized. Then again it is initialized but it stays in the temporal dead zone. It cannot be updated or redeclared in the same scope but object properties can still be modified if the variable is an object. What I mean by this line over here? Let's say if you have an object initialize it with a const keyword then you can add or delete properties from that object. So it's not that you have initialized the variable, the object with const keyword, you cannot add new properties to it. That is what this line means. Pause the video and look at some of the examples of varlet and const. Now let's talk about the approach. So start with a clear comparison framework that I'll compare these based on scope, hoisting, reassignment and redeclaration. Now give a concise definition of each of these. Mention ES6 introduction of let and const for historical context. Now provide a practical example that shows the difference in action. Now you can conclude this with the best practices, best recommendation. You can say something like this that I typically use const by default. Let when I use, when I want to reassign value to the same variable just like that and I do not use var at all. And frankly most of the people don't. If you are using it then stop using it. Now let's also talk about some tips over here. Show that you understand variable life cycle not just syntax differences. Demonstrate knowledge of temporal dead zone which we just talked about. Mention that you are aware of global object pollution that happens when you use var. Now let's move to the next question. Next question is creating a memoize function that caches the result of any function and returns the result from cache if available. Let's look at the solution for this. Let's understand the problem carefully. We need to create a function that takes in another function and caches the result. Now let's say we have an add function and we have given two parameters to that add function. It adds those two values and then returns the result. Now if I want to cache this function, what I need to do is somehow this function should cache the value of let's say we are passing 3 and 5. 
it should cast the sum of 3 comma 5 as an argument and then in the next time we call the same function it should not recalculate instead it should give it from the stored cache right so this is what we need to do pause the video to understand the solution clearly now let's look at the approach towards solving this question and towards answering this during an interview so since it's a wrapper the memoize function should always return another function we'll call the return function to perform operation so arguments will be added to that function which are which in our case was memoize add all the caching logic will be returned in the return function because the return function only has the set of arguments with it right the parent function does not have the arguments it only has the function definition make sure to call out closures here that we are forming for map now let's move to the next question which is what is closure in javascript so a function along with its lexical environment is called closure which means that a closure is a function that has access to its own scope its outer variables and global variables even after the outer function has finished executing closures remember the environment in which they were initialized or they were created now closures are commonly used for data privacy factory functions callback functions and implementing modules in javascript now let's look at some of the examples for closures pause the video to understand these clearly now let's look at the approach start with a clear definition a closure is a function that retains access to its lexical scope even when executed outside that scope. Explain the practical mechanism of how it works. Give a simple practical example like a counter. Mention several real world use cases like data privacy, factory functions, etc. If appropriate, mention potential memory considerations as well. Now some tips. Be prepared to write a closure example from scratch. Practice explaining the concept without relying on technical jargons. Connect it to modern JavaScript patterns like module patterns. Be ready to discuss how closures interact with garbage collection. Now let's move to the next question, which is promises in JavaScript. So promises are object representing the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation. They have three states, pending, fulfilled, or rejected. Promises help avoid callback help and provide better error handling. Async await is nothing else but a syntactic sugar over the promises. Making asynchronous code look and behave more like synchronous code, improving readability and maintainability. Now let's see an example for promises. Pause the video to understand this clearly. Now let's look at the approach, how you can answer these questions related to promises during an interview. Start with the problem they solve. Promises and async await help manage asynchronous code execution in more readable and maintainable ways. Explain promises first, states, creation, chaining, error handling. Transition to async await as syntactic sugar over promises. Explain promises first, like states, creation, chaining, and error handling. Then move towards async and await, as it's just a syntactic sugar over promises. You can compare callback approach, promise approach, and async await approach. Mention benefits like readability, maintainability, and error handling. Now some tips for promises. Be prepared to convert styles from callbacks to promises to async await. Understand promise states and error propagation fully. Mention promise.all, promise.race, promise.any if appropriate. Show you understand that async functions always return promises. Demonstrate knowledge of try catch with async await. Now let's move to the next question. Explain this keyword in JavaScript. This is very much asked and a lot of people do not understand this concept clearly. So make sure that you spend a lot of time on this topic and understand this better. So the value of this depends on how the function is called. In a regular function, this refers to a global object or when you define it in strict mode, then it is undefined. In method calls, this refers to the object that owns the method. In constructor calls with new keyword, this refers to the newly created object. With call, bind and apply, this is explicitly set. In arrow functions, this retains the value from the enclosing context. Now let's see an example for this keyword. Pause the video to understand this clearly. Now let's see the approach that you should take during an interview when asked about this keyword. Start with the key principle. The value of this is determined by how a function is called, not where it is defined. Outline the five binding rules. Default binding is global. Implicit binding is method calls. Explicit binding is when you specifically set the scope of this using call, bind and apply. New bindings, which is constructor. Lexical binding, which is arrow functions. Give a concise example of each rule. Mention common pitfalls, callbacks, event handlers, etc. Now some tips. Now instead of using the word it depends on scenarios, you should define all these cases 
for the scope of this. Be ready to explain arrow function behavior in detail. Demonstrate understanding of strict mode differences. Always be ready to debug. Let's move to the next question, which is map, filter, and reduce in JavaScript. Now, all these three array methods are provided by the array class in JavaScript. All are used to loop through an array in some way or the other. Difference here is the type of value each of these built-in methods return. Let's understand each of them with the examples. Pause the video to understand this clearly. Now let's look at the approach towards answering these questions in the interview. Give a one sentence explanation for each of these methods. Show the signature and parameter of each. Provide a simple practical example of each. Mention the immutability aspect as all these three methods return new values instead of changing the original array. Give real world use cases for the same. Now let's look at some tips for this question. Be prepared to implement these functions from scratch. Show that you understand when to use these appropriately. Demonstrate knowledge of using multiple methods together in chains. Mention performance considerations for large datasets. Compare with traditional for loops if asked. Now let's move on to the next question, which is prototypes in JavaScript and how does prototype inheritance work? So prototypes are JavaScript mechanism for inheritance. Each object has an internal property called prototype, which can be accessed using underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. This points to the prototype object. When trying to access a property of an object, JavaScript first looks for the properties on the object itself and then onto the prototype's prototype and so on. The chain continues. This chain is called prototype chain. Pause the video to understand this example clearly. Now let's understand the approach for giving answer in the interview. Start with a clear definition. Prototypes are JavaScript's mechanism for inheritance where objects can inherit properties and methods from other objects. Explain the prototype chain. Demonstrate both constructor function and object literal approaches. Show how to create inheritance relationships and mention ES6 class syntax as a syntactic sugar over prototypes. Now some tips. Use appropriate terminology. Prototype versus proto. Be ready to draw prototype chain if asked. Show you understand constructor property and its significance. Compare with classical inheritance. Beware of newer object methods like object.create and object.set property of. Now let's move to the next question, which is event loop in JavaScript. The event loop in JavaScript is a mechanism for handling asynchronous operations. JavaScript has a single threaded execution model with a call stack, callback queue, and a micro task queue. Now call stack executes code asynchronously. Web APIs and browsers handle asynchronous operations like set timeout set interval, fetch, etc. Callback queue holds regular callbacks from async operations. Microtask queue holds promised callbacks with higher priority than callback queue. So if an operation exists in microtask queue and another operation exists in callback queue, the priority will be given to the microtask queue. And the first function in the microtask queue will be taken to call stack and executed. Event loop constantly checks if the call stack is empty and moves task from queues to stack. Now in simple words, the main thing that event loop does, it takes any task from any queue, be it micro task queue or callback queue and takes it to the call stack for its execution. Now let's understand the process how event loop works. Synchronous code executes immediately on the call stack as we all know. Async operations are delegated to web APIs. When async operations complete, their callbacks go to appropriate queue. When the call stack is empty, event loop first takes micro task and moves them to the stack. After all the micro tasks are processed, the event loop moves callbacks from the regular queue to the stack. Pause the video to understand this example clearly. Now let's understand the approach which you should take during an interview to give answer regarding event loop. Frame it as JavaScript's mechanism to handle asynchronous operations while being single threaded. Describe the key components such as call stack, callback queue, micro task queue, event loop. Walk through the execution flow. Explain the priority order, synchronous code, micro task, and then task. Connect to real world scenarios, API calls, UI updates, etc. Now let me give you some tips on this. Draw the components and flow if given a whiteboard. Be prepared to trace through complex examples step by step. Show understanding of job queues versus task queues. Demonstrate knowledge of browser versus Node.js. Use appropriate terminologies like task, micro task, etc. Now let's move on to the last question which is hoisting in JavaScript. Hoisting in JavaScript is a concept for variable and function declaration behavior. JavaScript moves functions and variables to the top of their scope before execution. Now this line top of their scope does not mean anything clearly. JavaScript has two major phases, compilation phase and execution phase. During the compilation phase, 
the compiler scans everything and allocates memory to all the variables and functions that is what we are saying goes to the top of the scope however only functional declarations are hosted with their definitions but variables are given placeholders that is it for this video i hope you like the collection of questions that we have for this video and if you want to dive deep into any of these questions and want me to create a separate video on these let me know in the comments below i'll surely create another one thanks for watching see you next time keep coding bye bye